morning and uh, welcome to another installment of Napa Valley Grape Growers Friday in the Vineyards. Uh, my name is uh, Ivo Jeremas. I am a grape grower and winemaker at uh, Gergic Hills Estate Winery here in Napa Valley. We are standing in Yantville, uh, which is one of the most important historical sites in Napa Valley due to George Yant who, according to many accounts, planted first grapevines in Napa Valley in 1830s. Today we grow uh, Cabernet and we are blessed with the 61-year-old Cabernet. This is one of the oldest producing Cabernet vineyards. We do organic farming here and, and uh, regenerative farming, which we believe is helping uh, to preserve the vitality of plants. And uh, we see huge importance of having old Lines. Today we are facing all kinds of diseases, that's why I believe organic regenerative farming is important because this is what you get. Now I would like you to follow me and I will show you some of our old, old wines. This is my 31st harvest at Grgic Hills. Uh, I was uh, so fortunate that my uncle Mike Grgic brought me here from Croatia. We are Croatians and so he emigrated uh, in the 50s it was Yugoslavia, also was Yugoslavia when I left. And uh, he brought me here in 86 and uh, uh, as a mechanical engineer I didn't care much for grape growing and wine making, yet uh, I fell in love and quickly uh, dropped uh, engineering and be became mostly farmer. Uh, the secret of great wine is always in a great farming and great vineyards. So, so we focus on grape growing. Wine making is important of course, uh, it's a good skill, you cannot make create great wines unless you have great great grapes. During these years we never liked chemicals. My uncle obviously growing up before second war in the former Yugoslavia uh, they had no chemicals and everything was healthy so he was very familiar with the organic farming. So that was 80 years ago uh, the farming wasn't called organic bionomic natural it was normal farming you farm without chemicals so we always follow that that uh, that role. So through the course of years we were organic, bionomic and while we had good success still we had to fight diseases, mildew, we had to fight all these viruses. And last year uh, through my research I discovered uh, so-called regenerative farming. What is the regenerative farming? Uh, as the word implies, today most farming is degenerative. Degenerative mean, meaning you are killing soil, you are killing microbes in soil. So this kind of farming, if done properly, can do two things. Enhances the nutri nut nutritional uptake of plant and plant in, in, in a, a kind of cooperation with microbes uh, uh, can uh, create soil that we call it a disease suppressive soil. Uh, so the worst problem about growing anything today is these diseases. And just imagine if through proper farming you don't have to worry about diseases. So I believe finally with this kind of farming in a few years we'll be able to uh, through again healthy microbe. Microbes are key. Microbes in soil are key component for healthy vineyard. Healthy in terms of producing good grapes also fighting diseases and that's possible. So uh, for me this was the biggest discovery. My 34 years of uh, grape growing, uh, regenerative farming I believe is, is a finally we have a chance uh, to not to be ripping all these vineyards after 22 years and to be able to coexist with viruses. So when I, I, when I say regenerative farming will create uh, uh, soil suppressive, suppressive uh, so, uh, the disease suppressive soil doesn't mean that we won't have viruses. Viruses will be uh, visible and testable, yet they won't have influence on health of wine and productivity of wine. So they'll be latent kind of. So we are, it's uh, early September here in uh, Yantville, Napa Valley. Uh, we are harvesting lots of Sauvignon Blanc Chardonnay. This Cabernet, I believe, uh, uh, has to wait at least two to three more, uh, two to three more weeks. It will be ready. And uh, uh, let me tell you about uh, vintage a bit. Uh, I said uh, it was challenging, and I named a few reasons. Third reason is also incredibly low rainfall. But that's that's a, a life of a farmer. Uh, you you take what you get. 
last couple of years we had nice rainfall. This year uh, we are down 40, 50 to 60 percent in, in rainfall. Here in this vineyard we keep, typically get about 32 inches rain a year. This year only 14. Uh, yet this vineyard is overwhelmingly dry farm because once you get the roots deep down there's always water down four, five, six feet. Uh, if you, you take shovel and dig now you'll find nothing first to two or three feet. So idea is through organic farming to push roots, force roots deep down and there's always reserve uh, water. So you can see vineyard is not suffering by any means uh, from drought and uh, we are very um, excited about uh, quality. Uh, this year uh, we have uh, much less grapes than last two years uh, but that's how it's in nature. You get couple bumper crops and then plant wants to rest. So this, this year all vineyards are resting and uh, our crops will be much less than uh, 18 and 19. Uh, part of regenerative farming is uh, the understanding that uh, no-till is best for long-term uh, health of soil and plants. Uh, this year uh, I bought this machine called the Crimple Roller. Once uh, we plant cover crop, uh, which is going to happen in the next few, few weeks, and we get first rain, we'll have a three to four foot stand of, of cover crop, mostly barley uh, and a few other legumes. So instead of cutting uh, that grass or tilling it, we are going to roll it. So it, it looks something like this. You see here, this was old barley. And instead of, uh, instead of mowing it, uh, we just push it down and we create beautiful tur beautiful mat. Uh, uh, you might say what's the difference between this and cutting grass and leaving it? It, it, there is more straw available to cover soil. So here we are in California, the, the excessive sunlight and heat is enemy to soil because it destroys soil, especially kind of fries microbes. Most microbes are in top few inches of soil. So by covering soil, contrary to common belief, you save water. Uh, you use less plant, have more water available. Uh, then next big benefit is uh, water infiltrates more. It's not how many inches of water you got a year, how many inches of water it went into soil. If 80% water just runs off your soil into creek, doesn't matter how much water you got. So it's so crucial in these unpredictable years here in California to catch every inch of water. You want it down. You don't want any runoff. And then, and then also, uh, so this organic matter uh, that is on, on the top of soil, uh, it cools soil off. We measured temperature, it could be 10, 15, 20 degrees cooler if you have 2-3 inches of, uh, of uh, straw on a hot day. Many times we have 100 degrees here in Yantville. And you stick the probe, so this is not some kind of crazy talk. We have probes, we measure everything. So you can lower temperature by 20 degrees in soil, which means you prolonged activity of microbes for two, three, three months. So what we are tasting today is, is uh, 2015 old wines. This is exactly uh, comes from this block. And this is our best Cabernet. We make a small bottling. Uh, obviously, you can see my uncle's face on it. Uh, we the wine made in his tribute. 2015 vintage. I don't think there's a bad vintages in Upper Valley. We only talk about different vintages. And uh, the, the vintages remind me of my kids. I have six kids and uh, they're all good kids. They're all different. And uh, that's how I see vintages in Napa Valley. Thank you, my friend, for this wonderful wine. Cheers. Uh, thank you for watching and see you soon from Napa Valley.